now. Ladies and gentlemen, please fasten your seatbelts. Welcome to PrennerCast. Yes, business cards being swapped, beers being drunk. Can I say a nasty word? Can I say procrastination? With Pete Williams and Dom Gosher. How well did that go down? We can talk about that entire thing in a very another rant and soapbox episode if you want to. Visit us online at printermedia.tv. Welcome, everybody, to this, the 99th episode of PrennerCast with me, Dom Goucher, and him, Pete Williams. 99 problems and the podcast ain't one. Terrible Jay-Z reference. Okay. Um, what's even worse is I haven't got a clue what you were talking about. Oh, do well, well, really cool. <laughs> actually, um, speaking of Jay-Z, um, in a few weeks' time, I've actually got uh, a conversation scheduled with uh, Zach, I think it's O'Mary, I think that's how you pronounce his surname, uh, who wrote um, a bi- recent biography on Jay-Z um, about his business life, which is going to be really cool. So I'm really looking forward to that conversation. So that's uh, an upcoming episode uh, of the show. Cool. Um, but yes, it's a, it's a rap song that Jay-Z sung called 99 Problems and it was very popular. In, out there in the real world. You white guy living in Spain, you. Yeah, dude, me and the real world, we, we yeah, no, only thinly, only thinly associated. Um, this, this whole kind of conversations with the, with, with the rich and famous things getting a bit out of hand, really, Mr. Williams. And, you know, it's like this, this week is case in point. This week we have uh, a conversation, um, with, for, for the listeners with Karosh Dini. Um, who some of you may remember from, from previous podcasts. We talked about his previous book. He wrote a book about OmniFocus, um, mm-hmm. and he's written a new book. However, Mr. Williams um, was too busy <laughs> to, fit, to fit in a chat with Karosh, in, with, in line with Karosh's schedule and in line with our publication schedule for the podcast. So, so I had to do it. Well, I also think that, you know, you... Um, were the person who, who first sort of, I guess, you know, introduced me to, to Karosh's work. You obviously uh, read his original book um, and were a big fan, was a big fan of that book. So I also thought that it was a, uh, a, a great fit with you as well because obviously you're probably devoured much more of his content than I actually have too. Okay, I, I was actually trying to kind of avoid that, but I really can't because when you listen to the interview, it's patently obvious that, yes, I was actually quite excited by the opportunity to talk to Karosh. Um, and, and I didn't <laughs> mind at you. all. I was, yeah, fan, fanboy is actually the word that I used. Um, I admitted it. I was open and upfront about it. But um, yeah, it was. It's, it's a great chat, which we'll get to in a minute. But um, it, it's been a bit of a a bit of a workflow, omnifocus, productivity kind of few weeks for us. Um, I, Pete and I have both got um, advanced access to the new version of omnifocus. Uh, I'm it's actually quite funny. I, I, I got mine uh, recently, and, and the first time we spoke after I received my alpha access, I uh, answered the call going, I've got OmniFocus 2. I've got OmniFocus 2, thinking that I was really cool. And then you'll turn around and go on, dude, I've had it for two and a half weeks. <laughs> so uh, that pulled the air out of my balloon very quickly. It's, it's a rare occasion that it happens, but I do relish it when I can. <laughs> so yeah, we, we are. Crush we are, new book. Crush new book. It's... It's it's about getting things done. Well, it's called workflow beyond productivity. Um, and as and and as I mentioned in the interview, uh, Karosh, talk, Karosh and I talk about this. It, it's a little bit misleading, in my opinion, because it's not a traditional workflow or productivity book. It's almost like you should put like air quotes around the word productivity because to me it's much more than a lot of these books that have been published in the last few years you know productivity is a bandwagon that everybody's got on there's blogs about it there's books about it there's magazines about it there's all kinds of things workflow productivity time management it's a big thing yeah um Mm -hmm. and and some of it is well a lot of it is just rehashed stuff that we've all talked about we've all heard about you know from home truths and basic common sense that our parents have told us right the way up to you know real genuine stuff that you know that you and i have a lot of respect for things like you know the getting things done model by david allen and again this comes up a lot 
when I talked to Karosh. But to me, the book, this book is, it, it's a big old book. It's what, 570 pages. It's a digital book. Um, and you got it in all the different formats, which is great because when I loaded it on my iPad, um, and I loaded it in the, in the, the, whatever the technical, as EPUB or Mobi or whatever format it is, proper e-reader format that you choose, those formats allow you to mark up the text and highlight and make notes, mm. which is really, really useful. It's something that we do. Um, ever Absolutely. since, ever since, uh, we spoke to our friend from Read It For Me, who, uh, mm-hmm. who talk, who talks about doing that. Um, and, you know, I mean, half this thing's yellow with notes because as I was reading through this, what Karosh does in this book is not follow or not talk about any one particular strategy for workflow or productivity. He actually talks about the concepts behind it for the real meaning of things. And I'll, like, I'll give you an example, people to focus on and listen out for. And it's all to do with, you know, all these things that we know. If you, if you follow GTD, like Pete and I do, you know, there's a lot of concepts in there, a lot of terms that we talk about, um, things like context and inbox and things like that and t- tags and things and whatever. Um, and, and if you, if you're a GTD follower, you read the book, he says, this is a context. You go, okay. And you carry on. But if you have a problem with any of that, because you don't quite get it or you don't quite see it the same way as him, then you might get a sticking point with GTD. And I, it's something that I, I personally did. And what I found with Karosh's book is that he actually explains those concepts from base principles. Now, from base principles is something, Pete, that you and I talk about a lot, about understanding the true origins of something, the real why. Um, And this is something, again, Karash talked about. um, And it's almost like there's, there's, there's so much more that we could have got out, um, but, you know, we we were short on time because he talks about, base principles he talks about understanding the why and we touch very briefly on mastery uh a topic again that we we've talked about mm. on the podcast in the past um and i oh, think with robert green exactly robert green's book um so so you know it, it was like a it, it was almost like a a, a a collection of all the things that we've talked about, all the books and things that we've made reference to and the concepts and principles. It's all, it's all in this book. It's just a huge book about all these things, but it's, it's not a be all and end all book. It's not like follow this workflow that's in Karosh's book kind of problem, kind of, sorry, kind of situation. Um, and in a way, I mean, he says himself in the book, that was what his creating flow with OmniFocus book was about. That was a mm. book about a particular way to use OmniFocus and a particular technique and series of steps that he recommends. This book started out as an explanation of where all that came from. It just evolved. <laughs> um, Fantastic. Well, it's 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 a good read. It's a great interview. Should we uh, should we get into it? Yep. I'll uh, well I'll let you do that because otherwise you'll hear me twice. Here's Dom. Interviewing Karosh. You do that so well. Hi, Karosh, and thanks again for making time to join us on the show today. Hi, Dom. Thank you very much for having me on. I always find it strange when people thank us for having them on the show. <laughs> <laughs> we have such great people come on and take times out of their day to, to add value and share their thoughts, and we're always grateful. But they, they come on and they, oh, thank you very much. Okay. So I, I like it when it's a mutual exchange. Oh, absolutely. Um, now, <laughs> I have to confess something, and, and uh, I'm going to confess this to you, uh, and mm-hmm. the rest of, the, the, rest of the, the show audience already know this, and, and I'm totally aware. Pete and I are both massive fans of the OmniFocus product. And when your first book came out, Pete mm-hmm. and I almost clashed in the mid ether with an email of excitement about this new book that we'd found. <laughs> um, your first book, well, your first book on the, on the top, on, in this space anyway, we'll come back to that in a second, um, which, sure. which was um, creating flow with OmniFocus. And Pete was excited because somebody had actually made OmniFocus real world. And, mm-hmm. and given real examples. And I was excited because somebody had thought more than just about the features and functionality of OmniFocus and was thinking more about the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So 
when we heard about your second book, um, again, more emails clashed in the ether. <laughs> so it's fair to say I'm a bit of a fanboy, okay? It may come across. I apologize if this embarrasses you, but um, I'm. Pete has his little foibles. Uh, recently, Pete had a big old conversation with uh, Dan Norris from Informally uh, and, and a, a data service. And Pete is a, a data fiend. He loves data. And you could hear the excitement in his voice. Uh, when he was, t- when he, whenever he talks about data. Um, but for me, personal productivity, workflow, optimal performance, that kind of stuff, that's my, that's the thing I love. Um, mm. so, yeah, so ostensibly, we, we wanted to get you on the show to talk about your new book, mm-hmm. um, which is called Workflow Beyond Productivity. But secretly, I just wanted to have a chat with you. Because having read right, two books, awesome. <laughs> I was just fascinated. I just really wanted to, to, to kind of meet you, catch up, and just have a general chat. Well, I'm very excited that you enjoyed the books. I mean, that's that's wonderful. I mean, when I when I write, I um, you know, writing is such a uh, solitary activity that you have no idea. Okay, is this useful? Is this not useful? Is this make any sense whatsoever? I have you know, and and you just it's all such a solitary thing that it's it's wonderful to hear when um when yourself or, or whomever enjoys enjoys the words uh, I, so I'm, I'm i'm happy i can i can i can appreciate that you know pete and i regularly ask on the podcast for people to to give us feedback but even unprompted we get feedback on the podcast and even positive and negative we feel that mm-hmm. you know we really appreciate that people are out there and just giving us some feedback we, we know that we're doing something right or that we're having an effect um yeah now before we get into the book or, mm-hmm. or all of your books i just like could you just mm-hmm. talk a little bit about yourself and your background because you're not the the traditional author of books about mm-hmm. say well when the omnifocus book came out of nowhere for me um mm-hmm. So, so could you just give us a little bit of background about yourself. Sure. Um, so, I've always had a big interest in technology and uh, science and uh, kind of the hard sciences. And I, but then I deviated. I went uh, to. I like to say I made a hard left turn towards uh, med school, and I went into um, uh, uh, psychiatry. And uh, so I am now a practicing psychiatrist, but I also do a lot of therapy work, and that's most of what I do, but then um, my uh, throughout it all, I had also been a, uh, a musician. I'd been playing music since I was five and never stopped every day, keep doing it. And so it became, uh, so I've always had this sort of blend of several things going on. And uh, really the centerpiece of any and all of my books uh, or uh, creative works is um, fundamentally the, the uh, interface between the mind and technology. And uh, so I always come come to a, um, for some reason it keeps coming back to the central, even more central to, to, than that is the concept of play. So if, any, if you read any of the books that I've, I've written, that, that's always a center, uh, center theme with any of them. Um, so uh, I guess if I had to summarize myself, it would be about um, uh, finding that sense of, uh, of play within life and, and what that's about. And... Uh, and uh, yeah, cool. I mean, that, that's a you, you say the, the, about the play. Now that really is the mm-hmm. opening statement of of your your book workflow um, mm-hmm. beyond productivity, um, and it, it does carry all the way through. It's a theme that carries all the way through. Um, but it it's interesting to me because as I as I read the book, um, you talk about and let me let me just try and put this in a frame. I, and maybe you can give me your perspective of where you, you know, what you had in mind with it. But, but to me, mm-hmm. it's a little bit, it's a potentially misleading title. Mm. Now, I have this thing with potentially misleading titles, and I've mentioned it before on a number of occasions. Um, a long time ago, I, I, I was referred to book, the book The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. Oh yeah, sure. Um, a book that you make reference to, as, along with many, many others that I've I, I've read many times. Um, and when I finally got around to reading it, I, I was shocked at what the book was actually about because the title didn't help me. Mm. Um, I thought 
all kinds of things. Pete and I have had a conversation about this before. And I think with, with your book, this the workflow beyond productivity, it, mm-hmm. it's important to read the entire title. It is mm-hmm. about being, about beyond productivity. Yes. It, it's, it's the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. So anybody picking this book up thinking, hey, wow, this is about workflow or this systems or what, what a lot of the, the kind of buzzword authors have put together in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not it. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a uh, deeper, I, I wanted to find some central principles behind the workflow and, uh, you know, any of these sorts of methods, um, agile results or getting things done or any of these sorts of, uh, ideas, they all have various components of the workflow described in, in different terminology. And so I was looking for what is the underlying structure of any and all of these. And in that process, uh, I realized that it was actually that it, it kind of became a deeper uh, thing than productivity itself, and uh, so you can you can see how certain uh, certain uh, of these systems kind of are highlighted by various aspects of the workflow. So, for example, um, uh, the um, getting things done. This one of the central ideas, if not the central idea, at least as I interpret it, is this idea of getting things off of your mind as being the organizing principle. Yeah. And uh, that that is, you know, everybody looks at it like uh, you need to, okay, let me implement the system so everything can be off my mind. It's more like, no, that's the target. How are you going to devise the system in order to do that? And um, so that becomes like, uh, in my description of organization, um, this idea of uh, trust meaning a uh, uh, developed belief that something will continue behaving as, as it has been so that it can be relied upon, that that becomes this um, high, elegant, uh, mature level of organization that you develop towards. Um, and so you can see that that's kind of where that fits in there. And then something like, uh, let's say, uh, the Agile results is you, know, you have a lot of this sort of focus on outcome, which is a lot about vision, you know, and vision is is the sort of um, the one end of the potential of what an intention is. Uh, you know, that an intention is this potential created between um, where your present experience is and uh, this vision, which is the sort of um, idea of what reality could be that it is not presently. And so it's just the sort of codified way, or so the Agile results is a codified sort of scheduled way of, of, of developing that. And um, so it's like the underlying structure of a lot of these productivity ideas, but then I wanted to bring them all in concert. They needed to be all, uh, they all needed to work together. Um, And uh, so it was a very long iterative process of developing all these sorts of ideas to make them um, all sort of work together. So the idea of vision works with intention or uh, the idea of uh, what do I mean by present experience? You know, that's um, or or the concept of uh, silence as a means of of uh, stopping what we're doing, pausing, and getting into that. And then on top of it, you know, thinking about how do I make all these ideas accessible too? Because they, when I just rattle them off like that, it's kind of like, uh, you know, what, what am I talking about? <laughs> but but having to to pace it out at such a pace that you know, like, okay, I got to make this accessible for the reader. Uh, so that's where that's that's kind of how things evolved. And uh, yeah, evolved is actually a good word because you, you mentioned in the introduction of the book that it was originally intended as a corollary. Something to go with your OmniFlow, OmniFocus book, the, the book mm-hmm. about flow uh, with OmniFocus, um, because of all these extra concepts. And it, it's, it was very interesting as I read that, it really resonated with me that mm. there are those all these different workflow systems, and you do talk about many well-known systems and, mm-hmm. and also many well-known authors that you make reference mm-hmm. to as well. Um, mm-hmm. It was it was it was really it was like having a conversation with a friend when, when I was reading the book actually. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> mentioning all these well, all these authors that I've also read and, and all these concepts that I I really like like getting things done. Mm-hmm. Um, but you you when I was initially got used got was aware of getting things done it it mm-hmm. was fine for what it was but there was something there. Like a, 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 a fundamental understanding that maybe somebody who'd been through it a few times and, and, and seen the light 
had mm-hmm. got from it, but mm-hmm. it wasn't communicated up front. So I was have I was there was a bit of, always been a bit of a disconnect with me, and I think a lot of people feel like that with these things. Mm-hmm. So I can feel for you when you said that the book started out as a as a little side piece to go with mm-hmm. that, and it's turned into its mm-hmm. its whole book. And in fact, as you label it inside, it's five books. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> which when I first I first opened it went wow. <laughs> <laughs> Going to need to really allocate some time to that, and yeah. you you do go. You know, let's not let's not bury the headline. You do go into some depth in this book. This is not a light, fluffy, yeah. airy read. Yeah. Um, it's it's a serious book, but I do like the way that you break these things down and you you identify the concepts because yeah. a lot because that's what I resonate with. But it, it really is, as you say, a book to go with these other things. You mentioned mm-hmm. this in the book, you know. Anybody that's maybe tried to get into getting things done or mm-hmm. has got into it but maybe tailed off because something wasn't working out. Mm-hmm. It's there's a part in your book, you know, personally mm-hmm. if somebody said that to me, I'd be able to direct them to a section in your mm-hmm. book and say, You ought to read that bit. And and when mm-hmm. you read that bit, I think you'll have a better understanding of for you know, for example, the the review habit. Mm-hmm. You know, in get, getting things done, David Allen talks about the review habit. The review habit is really ha- really important. Mm-hmm. You should do it. That's basically, in rough summary and paraphrasing, David Allen's writings on the review habit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you actually explain <laughs> why and the the positive reasoning and and things like that. And I think you know maybe there's a little bit of your psychology background coming in there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I yes. found it really helpful. It's, as I read each piece, and I could mm-hmm. relate it to these other things. It helped me with those other pieces as well. Excellent. So when you were reading it, it sounds like you, um, it helped to bolster the ideas. It helped to say, oh, that's why I'm doing it. That's and, exactly uh, it. Yeah, that's exactly it. It really did. I mean, was, was that your intention as you were discovering these things and identifying them in these other systems? Were you just trying to present that information? I think, I think so. I think it was about, um, so it's, it's this idea of distilling basics, this idea mm-hmm. of, taking whatever craft it is you want to get good at and trying to think of what about it is most basic to my experience of that and really bringing it down to those, you know, what, what are the fundamentals of this thing? And so that's what it was about workflow. And the reason why that works or the reason why that's useful is then I'm, I'm wondering if it worked for you in this regards, which was um, when you have an understanding of why, uh, what the purpose is behind it, what the uh, meaning is behind some of these things, such as a review, then you have um, more of a confidence towards doing it, more of an understanding towards doing it, more of a uh, a different position towards scheduling it. Um, and uh, when you get up from, let's say, a review, to actually feel like, okay, yes, I've 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 got a clear mind, and this is why this is useful to me. So. You get into it more uh, anyway. Yeah, well, I, I can I can make you feel a lot better by saying yes. That's absolutely <laughs> what I got from it. Um, Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> but ser- seriously, I mean, it, it, it to me the understanding of why is one of the fundamental elements of mastery. And mastery mm-hmm. is something that you talk about in the book. And we've had a number of people on the show talk about mastery. Um, mm-hmm. But to me. I never feel like I can fully implement something or I can fully make something my own mm-hmm. until I understand it from those base principles because otherwise I'm I'm kind of just copying mm-hmm. or just doing because I'm told to. Yeah. And I did feel that. I did feel that with it's funny. I didn't realize I was feeling that with getting things done mm-hmm. until I read your book. Okay. And then I read your book and I realized that that some of the gaps were there, and again, it it, it, it was again just being slightly uh, slight fanboy, slight speaking <laughs> of the ego. But but your psychological background does, I think, come through because of yeah. the 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 depth that you go to with these things. As and I I personally I don't I'm please don't be offended, but I'm not sure that this is a book for everyone. No, He's looking on the bookshelf yeah. under the heading workflow. Yeah. But but people who do want this mastery, who want to 
who do genuinely want to be more efficient, more productive, mm-hmm. I think we'll get some real deep insights. And one of the things, one of the things that absolutely stood out to me, mm-hmm. um, and this is a 570-page book, <laughs> according to my iPad, which I read it on, um, sure. and, and marked basically every page. Um, <laughs> but one of the things that stood out to me out of the entire thing was mm-hmm. something that I would never ever have thought of in this context, which is silence mm-hmm. and the importance of silence and the use of silence. Yes. Um, and it, it, it's become now something that I'm very significantly aware of. Um, yeah. can, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, and actually, as you were uh, describing you know, what, what you're coming away from the, uh, uh, the book with, it, it, it's very... I very much enjoy and appreciate the fact that it 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 brings the sort of sense of uh, yourself into the process, and I think that stems from uh, the silence aspect. Instead of just doing the the, um, you know, it's important to study systems that exist, but then being able to integrate that to where it works for you, and so that you could build it, you could do what you want to do with it, and um, you know, a certain self awareness that goes with it. That if that this text has been able to impart that, in other words, give you a sense of choice and agency and all that, then, then the book does what it's supposed to. So that's awesome. <laughs> but yes, in terms of silence. Um, uh, so silence is not silence as in um, uh, you know, a quiet room, although that can be uh, helpful. It is the purposeful uh, resting of attention on your present experience. It's what's on your mind. It's, um, you can access it by simply pausing and pausing regularly and, uh, that you should be able to stop whatever it is you're doing and essentially let go of the intention, let go of the work, let go of the project, let go of just everything, you know, the work you've done in, in building the session and building the environment so that you can, uh, focus on the thing in front of you will allow you to return to the work. Um, after this period of, of pausing and silence. And the reason why it's so important, I mean, there's, I can only guess on several of the reasons, but I think there's more that I can't even think of because uh, it's just hard to put them into words, is that it gives you this um, space and ability to, to go to the things that you have not acknowledged. It lets you think about the things that you're anxious about. It lets you think, think about the things that you desire. It lets you rethink the, 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 the vision, the outcome. Um, and, and a lot of this is just to say, um, all of it's as, uh, meandering as it may seem, uh, that my words are being here. It's really all accessible just by pausing. And, um, really where I got this from, um, in, you know, in the intro, I mentioned, uh, Kenny Warner's, uh, effortless mastery, yes. the, um, uh, uh, book on, uh, on uh, this, uh, on playing music and, um, really was very fundamental, uh, equally, um, I'd say, uh, moving to me as uh, getting things done in any of the productivity books or organization books, in that uh, I think that's where I picked up this idea from, this idea of, you know, if you sit at the keys, if you sit at the piano, and you really want to play and really want to make it sound great and want this and want that, you're going to mess it up. It's it's not that that's unless you've got the practice and all that behind it, it's more about um, you need to let go and allow that part of, uh, you need to let go of even the desire to play. You need to take your hands off the keys. And um, when you sense that certain, um, uh, you could use the word uh, unconscious, perhaps unacknowledged um, uh, aspect of wanting to play, that part of you that wants uh, that, um, almost is not quite yourself in that. It's very hard to describe unless you're in it. Um, then that allows you to practice a different way. That allows you to, um, to, uh, to uh, make good music, which is this idea of effortless mastery, that you can press the keys to the degree that it almost seems like you're just not even doing it, or that you can play the, uh, a whole stretch of notes almost to the point where it feels like you're not even doing it. And that all comes from silence. That all comes from letting go of the intention, letting go of the thing in front of you. Yeah, I mean, that, that speaks to, to the core of the book, this idea of, of play. And there's a, there's a quote in there, I think it was actually from, from Kenny's book, I 
go ruffle through my notes, mm-hmm. but they're too extensive. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> about when a, when a true when, when a true master or true craftsman carries out mm-hmm. their thing, they do it with that quiet smile because they're actually it's not a challenge to them; it's a joy. Yeah. Yeah. To me. Yeah. That that's yeah. that's go ahead. Yeah. That's like the centerpiece. That's that's it right there. Yeah. So, to me, the silence, things that stood out to me, again, let's talk talking and making this relationship with all these other um, concepts. Because this book, to me, I would, just just to raise the level of language on it for a second, this to me is like a meta mm-hmm. book. Mm. Because it gave me a new perspective on, or, or re, reacquainted me with a lot of these kind of classic books that I've read in the past. You know, the book on flow, um, mm-hmm. by, by Mikhail Csikszentmihalyi. I'll move on quickly with the bad pronunciation. You know, um, <laughs> Josh Waitzkin's book I have trouble. about the art of mm-hmm. learning. You know, all oh, those yeah. books, you make reference to them, but you, you kind of add a perspective to the thing. And, and the silence, one of the good, a good example and a practical one maybe the audience can relate to. Um, mm-hmm. You make reference to the Pomodoro technique. Mm-hmm. And we, roughly, if anyone for any reason hasn't come across this, it's this idea of breaking your working time up into these chunks of time, 25 minutes at a go, five-minute break, four of those sessions, and you have a longer break. Now, I have mm-hmm. massive problems with the Pomodoro technique on, on any <laughs> given day. Sometimes it works really well for me, sometimes it doesn't. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. your particular spin on that, mm-hmm. bringing in this, the silence part, w- yeah. to me, really, I mean, I, it's I, not necessarily your particular actual use and, and the way that you personally formed reformed it but just this idea Mm -hmm. of using the silence both before you start to have Mm -hmm. awareness of what you're going to be doing but also when you've finished you know the 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 time to to reflect on what you've done um but without this formal and rigid block in between that's governed Mm -hmm. by some anomalous choice of time um, right. The important part is the beginning and the end. Yeah. 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 That this. Um, so yeah, I changed it to this idea of the closing technique, where yeah. it's basically you need time to um, store the intentions. You need time to store the thing that you're doing, um, and to the degree that it's off your mind, that you need to be able to take. Okay, um, I just did this. I did this, and now for me to pick it up later and to bring my mind back to this sort of state of mind as best as I can. I need to put this task over there. I need to write this thing over there. I need to put my references over there. And that all takes time. And you need to buffer that time so that you don't have, you're not running into that um, with something else. You know, that uh, you have, uh, let's say you have to go somewhere in 20 minutes. Uh, give yourself that uh, five, 10 minutes at the very end uh, to, uh, you know, set the alarm so that you have that time to reflect. And, and, and to the degree that it's off your mind, get it off your mind. And then the next thing is free. Absolutely. I mean, I, and I picked up little things like that throughout the whole book where things that maybe I'd struggled with but didn't realize I'd struggled with it. Um, and it's not, it's not just about getting things done. It's not just about efficiency. It is about mm. the, turning all this increased pressure on ourselves you know, because a lot of our mm. audience, you know, they deal with, they may be dealing with a second business they're trying to get started, or they're dealing with a lot of yes. information that comes into them. And mm. adding in these systems and things like that, mm. it's a bit like your example of sitting at the, sitting at the, the piano, willing yourself to play and, and straining and, 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 and having that kind of overt pressure mm. on yourself rather than being able to relax back. And what I found yeah. with a lot of your examples and, and a lot of the concepts that you put forward were that it helped me just bridge those little gaps. For example, mm-hmm. silence at the end of a session to – and it's, it's something that you may have come across somewhere else. You know, Somebody else may have said it as, you know, when you finish the job, you should tidy up after yourself. And we all go, yeah. yes, Dad, of course, or, you know, or <laughs> yes, boss, or whatever. And, and, and it's there in your mind – but 
Yeah. The why isn't always communicated. Right. So we're back to that why, yeah. the fundamental reasoning. You know? Yeah. And I think you explain that very well in the book. The as you say, the the gathering of what you've done, but also the, the transition between things. Um, yeah. what I also got personally from the silence piece was that I'm I'm a, a my my vice, I'm an inveterate task switcher. Mm. And it's my th one thing that I have to watch carefully. I have to close all my distractions, something that you talk about in the book. Um, mm -hmm. I have to close all my distractions. I have to govern my, the, the time of day that I check and respond to emails, all those things that I think just about everybody ha has an issue with. Um, mm -hmm. But the idea of, of the silence uh, was great because it was like, okay, I've got to the end of my, my, my session, Mm -hmm. But even though I've got to end my session, I'm not immediately going to start another one or immediately going to go and do something else. Yeah. It gives me that little <laughs> breathing space that actually helps deal with you know, fatigue, helps deal with mm -hmm. distraction, helps deal, as you say, with, with just making sure that things are off your mind. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like it also gives you maybe that sense of completion um, that's needed to really do the next thing uh, better and that that same thing better uh, that it, like it gives you that that sense of confidence that you know that it, rather than like if you don't have it you know that's when you start jumping from one thing to the next to the next because you need to feel that yeah I mean, at least it's it, it, it's I, I I'm struggling now really to to because I I literally have pages of notes I'm not joking um, and I am li I have to read the book another time a second go at least. Mm -hmm. It seems to me a book that I'm going to get more and more from as I go through it, and also as I can, as I find other things that I can relate back to the, to the book. But I, I, mm -hmm. the core concepts, I think, it's important. If you could kind of just help me I, highlight the core concepts that you that you've put in the book, um, mm -hmm. just a brief run through, to, just so people can get an understanding of the kind of things that you do talk about. Because I've been a bit, a li little bit. Obtuse. I've said it's the title is Workflow and Beyond Productivity, and we've talked about that it's about core concepts and it's a meta mm -hmm. book and things. But I think people might want to know what's actually you know what's actually useful to them in there. So from 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 my the big takeaways from me, I've talked about this 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 tiny thing about silence, which is actually a huge thing. But other things that you talk about, you talk about a concept of intention. Mm -hmm. And that's a, sure. a core part of, of, of everything, really. Yeah. Um, well, uh, all right, let me... I'm actually going to go into the uh, table of contents really here just so I, I can get my mind kind of uh, into, the, into the mindset for it. Um, the, um, actually, before I jump, jump into that, um, I, I do want to say that what it, it sounds like you're getting from it, um, which is also, I think, a centerpiece of it, which is this idea that... Um, a mastery of, uh, most of mastery is a mastery of the basics. And when you get that, that's when you start to uh, be able to express your own voice and things. Yes. That you can, uh, you know, that it sounds like you've got, you've had very, you've studied all these sort of uh, different ways of being productive and you have your own system, but these little gaps were there. It's, it's, it sounds like more than just filling in those gaps. Once those gaps are filled, you achieve a level of mastery that you can start building systems that mean something to you in a stronger, uh, stronger way. Um, so that's, that's what I'm hearing. And that that's, that's very a very good point. Hear. I mean, David Allen himself says in, in the book, Getting Things Done, you know, you may read this book five or six times. You may read it over a mm -hmm. period of time. I mean, I read it first Mm -hmm. more than five years, maybe six years ago, and I've gone through mm -hmm. it about once a year. And each time I do, mm -hmm. I develop a new level of understanding. And I, I previously yes. talked about this with Pete, and we likened it to when you're a, a student of martial arts, and in certain of the martial mm -hmm. arts, you'll go right the way through to the black belt, highest level. And then mm -hmm. in a symbolic gesture, you return to the first mm -hmm. grade to, mm -hmm. to go back through again, but with the eyes of a... Of a of somebody who's who's got more understanding and learning, and what I found with your book yeah. is that that is a, it, it's helped me, kind of jump. Mm -hmm. Forward in that process, I I've, I like to think that I you know Pete and I both you know 
like to think that we're relatively well organized people because of the number of things that we deal with and you know Pete's mm -hmm. kind of legendary for it um and I I'm more of a more of a student still in in the growth of my knowledge mm -hmm. but I I found as I say some of these gaps and and it means that maybe I'm not so efficient with certain things or I don't find a resonance with those things or whatever um, mm -hmm. but yeah, it, it is that self-expression thing. It's, the, it's that idea that once you have the confidence, another word that you've used, mm -hmm. you know, you can, mm -hmm. and it's applicable to so many different things. I mean, again, we, we're talking about workflow, we're talking about productivity, we're talking about mastery. Mm -hmm. These are all topics for our audience that you know they're all interested in. Um, yeah, but but it's, it's such a big topic. Sure. So it, yeah. So the idea. So the centerpiece, the, what I start off with in the major section is this, um, the theory upon which uh, everything rests is this idea that mastery and meaningful work develop from guided play. And so if anything, the, maybe if I were to retitle the book, it would have something about mastery and meaningful work. That, that's, that would be uh, something about in the title, although I've been through, I've got to say, like 100 titles at least. Uh, anyway, uh, so the, it begins like book one is about intention and organization, and you know what is an intention, and um, so this, you know, it's it's where are you now, where do you want to be, and some sense of potential between, and um, and then I go into this idea of where you want to be is not always clear, and so that's the idea of where you want to be is the vision, and uh, when it's not clear, then the process of resolving that vision is creativity itself, um, that creativity is that process. And in order to access creativity, play needs to be involved. And it's the same play that is a toddler's play, and, it's a, and that play is also the zone, and it's also the meditative mind state. It's learning, it's um, interaction and exploration of self and world. And I you know, go into some of that and how that factors in and how that's needed um, for uh, mastery and meaningful work. And then... You know, when, you know, that's all well and good, but then, okay, now what? You know, if I'm just going to be goofing off in the corner and playing and it's that that won't become stuff. So uh, then I get into the idea of what's organization. And uh, when you have it, when you c approach organization from that mean, uh, then you know, then organization becomes important and it's not and it's something that you want to do in a way that's about you. It's not about, um, okay, I'm just going to line things up this way because somebody told me to. Um, it's it's about uh, you know, what makes what 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 are the fundamentals of organization and I go into these uh, three pillars, you know that um, something is available when it's relevant, it's accessible when it's uh, relevant, and it's avoidable when it's irrelevant. And then I go through how does that make up organization and what are the details of that? How does storage get involved? How does maintenance get involved? How do and I I, I break it down into very kind of fine examples of all this. And this is probably the most, um, I think, I could be wrong, but I think it's one of the more difficult parts of the book because there's, it seems like all of this is these very widespread things. Um, I, I make the uh, connection of organization to learning, that they're not separate processes, that if organization is this um, support and clearing of a path for the development of an intention, then uh, that means that the mind and the world are both part of that and um, how actually organization often fails because of this uh, lack of recognition of that and uh, so then you know so how do you organize in a way that's meaningful to you is, is this sort of section um, and then I go through a few ideas of, of um, uh, practice of that and uh, like a session of organization and uh, you start uh, seeing uh, I start seeing that uh, where I had the uh, struggles in creating the book is that a lot of these ideas are all interrelated um, uh, so like a session of organization, I don't describe session until later on. Um, but for that, um, reason, I think it speaks to your point, uh, Don, that this idea that, um, it, I think you have to go back over the book. I have to, I think you have to, you'll gather more as you kind of revisit. Yeah, um, certainly, certainly things as we went through stood out to me, mm -hmm. um, more mm -hmm. than others. And yeah, that, that first section, that first book is highly mm -hmm. theoretical. Um, mm -hmm. with, with some practical examples. And I do like the practical examples that you talk about um, mm -hmm. and the, the idea, the ideas behind it, how you, how you model the ideas. It's, it's great. Mm -hmm. um, because 
it, it, I'd say it's, it's deeply theoretical, um, mm -hmm. but important. It's foundational. And I think you, you're, yeah. again, to, to almost keep saying the same thing, you're not talking about anything particularly new. And I can mm -hmm. see a lot of common concepts like things from getting things done, things from other organizational systems are reflected mm -hmm. in what you're saying. It's just that the way that you're talking about them, I think, will resonate with people if they have struggled mm -hmm. with the, the almost simplistic mm -hmm. way that other people have presented it. Because when you're presenting a book about a, a, an organizational system, it's this is my mm -hmm. system, so you need to know what this word means. There you go, right, it fits into the diagram here, off you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I, and, it's fine if you understand what if you really feel and understand what that word means. But if you don't, I think it can be a hindrance. Yeah, I think uh, it's very useful to know any and all of uh, to study systems. You know, um, for example, when I started uh, um, uh, learning music and com composition in, in a very detailed way, it was you know I would I would transcribe. This was a, t a, a teacher of mine that told me that it's an excellent way of learning. and that, So I would take um, Beethoven pieces, I would take Beatles pieces, I would take Chopin, I would take um, police or whomever. I would just take all these sorts of uh, different uh, musicians and bands that I thought were good, for whatever reason I thought, you know, whatever good meant as good musicians, and just started to transcribe it and say, how do they do this? and distill it into the very essence of whatever it was. And then that would allow me to create music uh, in my own voice because I knew what the basics were. Um, and that's very much what this book is about book workflow. So I'm hoping that it, it presents those basics to others so that it's like, okay, now I know what this system is and I know what that system is. These are all the workings that are going on behind it. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, that... Yeah. It's very similar to, to what Pete and I do um, with a lot of our mastermind groups mm -hmm. where we will take maybe a, a, a well-renowned piece of marketing or just an everyday piece of marketing that we've seen and we will break mm -hmm. it down and say this is a good headline in this copy or a good title for the book for example but this is a good headline mm -hmm. in this copy because of this and it's, it's applying mm -hmm. this fundamental principle um, yeah. And a lot of people, as you, you know, as you say, they, they'll have looked over the classical piece of music or they'll have just taken for granted that the workflow system that they're trying to implement, the person's just said, do this, so they do it. Um, mm -hmm. And again, you know, that, that again, that's why I resonated with the, with the book and its, its format. And I do sympathize with the complexity because of the, the interrelated mm -hmm. nature. But the, the format mm -hmm. to me was, was helpful in, again, understanding those core principles because a lot of other things like if you talk to anybody about music which is as you say a common mm -hmm. thread through here in our world mm -hmm. copywriting is a huge element of what goes on mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. any kind of marketing all these things have been written about uh, mm -hmm. at varying levels of accessibility um, mm -hmm. but and, and you know you you have dummies books and idiots guides and, mm -hmm. and also classical texts that have been around for hundreds of years. But if you actually mm -hmm. look at workflow and productivity, there's a lot of mm -hmm. high level buzzword laden workflow system books. Mm -hmm. But yeah. there isn't very there's very little other than the deeply deeply psychologically detailed and scientific mm -hmm. scientific texts. There's very little on the mm -hmm. actual mechanics of it. Right. You know, I mean, I, yeah, I, I, saw that. I tell people to read, read the book on flow, but really it's a very scientific mm -hmm. and difficult to read book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's a very good book, it and, uh, but it's also very, um, it, it will be tough to maybe actualize that for oneself at times. Yeah. I don't know. It depends on how you approach it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I even make mention in there that, like, were I to have this conversation uh, with uh, Mihaly, I, I can't pronounce his last name well. Uh, anyway, uh, that makes me feel if so I were to have this better. conversation, <laughs> <laughs> really, I can't. Um, that uh, it's it's an excellent book, and uh, you can tell that he really gets into it and yeah. loves it and, and the and all that. But I would have this. Um, you know, this way of approaching creativity that's different than him. And I'd have to have this sort of discussion with him about it and say, okay, this is this and this is that. And, and uh, a way of accessing, I'd, uh, let's see if I can back up here. 
I have to make it so that I can access the words myself. I can access the idea of creativity myself. Yeah. And um, I think that's what I saw with this, this book was this idea of um, how do I make, how do I bring a very um, serious academic, I don't know about academic, but a serious in-depth view of, of what is going on in the workflow in a way that can be presented uh, to anyone and everyone. In other words, let's make a textbook. You know, let's make this, let's make this, you know, that's, I've always loved textbooks because you can always ask it a question, a good one. You can ask it a question and the answers in there are, if it's not, it'll refer you somewhere where you can get the answer. Yes. And uh, that, that's what I wanted to make with this. I wanted to make, okay, I don't know what this word means. Okay, there's a place where I've got that defined. There's the glossary. Go there. And then, and then, oh, you don't know. Okay, well, you know what? This is a, this book over here about procrastination. It's a good book. And here's what I know about it. And you can go to that. You know, it's, it's like that. That's, a, that's actually a really good way of, of describing the book. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say textbook in, in this common perception that textbooks are dry and uninteresting. Mm. You know, if you're not the scientific or investigatively minded person, you may think textbook is a bad way to talk about a book. But, but mm. the, mo the frame that you just put forward, that, that it contains either the information you need or a reference to where to find mm. it, is, is a good one. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned something earlier about, about applicability, accessibility, you know, actually mm -hmm. implementable things. And that, I just mm -hmm. want to make sure that we cover, because you know, the... I know you're, you're a busy guy, and, and this call is actually, <laughs> even though it's gone flown by for me, I think we're getting close to time. I just want to cover book two, because I think there's some very okay. practical, applicable pieces in book two, which is about stations, habits, and sessions. And I think these are things that yes. will definitely resonate to somebody, even without reading the book, if you can just describe them from your perspective. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. So... Um yeah, what I was explaining earlier, earlier was book one, and yeah, there's, there, there are five. So this is the second. Uh, stations, habits, and sessions probably resonates most with the uh, idea of most task management systems. And um, the idea of, so a station, a station, um, or even let's back up from that, what is a task? So I look at, you know, we, we usually look at the word task as interchangeable with uh, intention. Uh, but I look at uh, tasks as stored intentions. You know, you have these things written down, and what you actually do based on the thing that you read is different. And that seems like a uh, a small, silly distinction, but it's not. It's actually huge. You know, once you realize that, um, you know, if you look at your projects in OmniFocus, for example, you're doing the work, or any project system, you, you're doing the work, and, and you realize the tasks you've written are not the same things you actually did to make that yeah. project actually happen. Yeah. And that that's a lot of the time, you know, if not always the case. And um, so anyway, the idea that uh, tasks are stored intentions, stations are where you store those tasks. So contexts are a familiar idea. You know, this um, the, the tool, place, or person without which the thing cannot be done or... Other people have mindsets as a way of uh, putting things down or, or organizing their work or whatever it is. You have paths of habit. You have things you do regularly. You have these paths you walk. And along those paths, you set up these stations. You set up these sort of, um, you know, at your office, at your home, wherever. These stations and however well they're organized or disorganized are the containers for these uh, intentions. So how you organize those things are, are matters of um, habit and thinking through and, and really are very fundamental to any of these sorts of um, task management systems. And then what the idea is about guides versus uh, tasks, I'm actually starting to write another, uh, I'm trying to rewrite the, some of this section I'll probably put up as a post at some point, the idea of guides and shifting between guides and habits and tasks. And, you know, let's say, for example, you're doing... Um, uh, you want to develop a habit. Um, before you have the habit, you have to have some way of um, starting it. And if you have, let's say, something listed down, you have written down in, in a large list of tasks, um, exercise or take out the garbage or whatever it is you want to take, start this habit, um, you, you write it down until you can develop the guides. The guides are these things that will um, present to your experience. So until you have the habit, a messy set of dishes may not inspire you to clean those dishes. But then how do you start developing the habit so that that experience will inspire you to 
do the dishes. Um, and uh, so a lot of this is about the, um, uh, let's see, how all of this fits together, how these tasks, guides, habits, stations all fit together. Yeah, it's a practical um, implementation of the theory that you've already expounded in kind of book one, really, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I'm giving it the justice that it, it should. You can tell kind of how I, uh, from basically how I talk, you can tell that I, I, I say a lot of the stuff that kind of all goes together, and then I have to go back later and say, okay, i got to take this part and put this over there and put this over there. It's kind of how I wound up writing it. <laughs> Pretty much like how most people write and create music and things like that. They they get it out, and then they reorganize it. I'm very much the same myself. That's why we, we re Pete and I both resonate with mind maps as a planning tool. But oh yeah, sure. From from my point of view, I mean, from book two, the stations, the habits, and the sessions, it, it's mm -hmm. those are those are kind of the the core units, functional units, the practical examples mm -hmm. of how you can implement the knowledge from book one and from other parts of the book. I mean, it's it's to me, it's a progressive book. It starts mm -hmm. very logically. You know, it clearly has been thought through and, and reorganized from. From however it originally came out in its pieces as it's evolved, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. the, you've got the core concepts in book one, and I, I say book one; they're just labels within inside the, the entire the entire object. Mm -hmm. It's all one book, but mm -hmm. they're broken up. Mm -hmm. Book one is the core concepts, and book two is these practical implementations. And I do love; I would strongly recommend this to anybody who's interested in the topic, because I love some of your real world examples, and again, they resonated with me. You know, things mm -hmm. like washing the dishes or refilling the coffee mm -hmm. canister. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the, the truth, uh, the, tr the true, true life example of, you know, as you said just now, you have your task list in OmniFocus, but you very rarely do things the way that you wrote them down in OmniFocus or whatever task mm -hmm. tracking, whether you wrote them down on a piece of paper. Um, right. And things like that. You know, mm -hmm. um, so, so for your example was going into the kitchen to do things. And you don't go in and do one thing that was on your list, then go back and tick it off on your list, then go back in mm -hmm. and, do, and do the next thing. You tend to batch these <laughs> things up. You know, that's the reality of it. And I do think, you know, for all of, we've talked about a lot of theory and a lot of kind of deep topics and analysis of these things mm -hmm. in detail. There, it is mm -hmm. an incredibly practical, real world book. It's, it's anchored in the real world. Um, and there mm -hmm. is a lot of applicable stuff in it around i mean i I found the stuff I could grasp easily and quickly was it was in definitely in book two um, mm -hmm. but but some the ev things resonated with me all the way through this just a, mm -hmm. it, it's a kind mm -hmm. of a sum up kind of a summary as we get towards the end mm -hmm. of your time but it's also mm -hmm. it, it's it's an odd little compliment. At some point in, f in the future what what you might mm -hmm. actually have is an interview with somebody that believes that this book was written before mm. getting things done mm. <laughs> or before some other management, uh, workflow management, time management concept that was out there. And uh -huh. the reason is because of the way that you describe these concepts. If you look through mm -hmm. and we talk about, for example, just go back to book two briefly. If we talk about mm -hmm. um, stations, you know, you very, mm -hmm. very, you very briefly mentioned contexts, which is a getting things done concept. Mm -hmm. But stations yeah. is a better described, more understandable, mm -hmm. larger object or larger concept mm -hmm. than context. It's mm -hmm. almost like contexts came from stations. Mm -hmm. So, right. so the, yeah, the, these are the somebody could easily make that mistake that that somebody read your book and went, okay, well, if I you know, take a bit of that and put it over here and call it this. I can use that in my system. <laughs> Sorry, David but Allen, it, no it, offense. <laughs> well, actually, it was inspired by, you know, having gone through getting things done. So it yeah. actually went in the other direction where it's like, what is a context fundamentally? And and then getting to the idea of stations, you know, that a station could be something like a temp, you know, just writing a task down on a scrap piece of paper um, that, you will, that you know you will come back to. That That's a station. So in a sense... It expands the idea so that you can allow yourself to use the materials at hand to clear your mind in whatever way is needed. Yeah. I mean, that, that really, you know, my summary would be of this, and what I got from this is that 
it takes all these well-known concepts from all these different places and just explains them in a, just that little bit of a wider sense so there's a little bit more to get hold of so that there's a little bit more for you to personally relate to in your own particular example and circumstances which just makes it more accessible even to the point you know there's an appendix there are no appendices at the end as, a, as an appendix with a number of increasingly complex examples of organizing things Mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, something that people can very easily get lost in. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I have to say, as I, I warned you at the beginning, it could be a bit of a fanboy show, but I thoroughly <laughs> enjoyed this. I thoroughly enjoyed the, your book. So I have to ask you what's next. I don't know. That's a great question. I'm trying to figure that out myself. And for the moment, I'm taking a break, playing the piano, maybe a video game or two, but uh, taking a break. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, I'll see. I'll, um, I, I do have ideas, but I can't, I'm, I can't say specifically because I, I, I don't want to lock down a direction just yet. Well, I, w I would humbly ask to be on the preview list for whatever is next. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. Now, so, Pete, Pete has a classic so question just that mm -hmm. he asks absolutely everybody. It's my favorite question, and he's had, he gets a lot of great responses to this. We have talked extensively. We've talked about you. We've talked about the board. We've talked about workflow. We've talked about so many things in this in this this, this conversation. Mm -hmm. But what is the question that you wish I'd a I had asked you so that you could have <laughs> got across something that you think is fundamental or really important f to our audience? Oh my goodness! Um, I think you, honestly, I think you asked it, which was uh, at the very beginning. What kind of summarizes? Uh, where I'm coming from with this and uh, and the idea of uh, minded technology being kind of the centerpiece uh, that that's really I think you asked it and that, that was uh, the idea okay well I, I, I will class myself as a competent interviewer at this point <laughs> if I actually <laughs> asked all, all the good questions Kurosh thank you so much for your time yes. today I, you know you're even even though you say you're going to take time playing the piano and things, I know you're a busy guy. Sure. Uh, and yeah. Pete and I both appreciate your time. And um, I'm sure anybody that, that picks up the book is going to appreciate the work that you've done here. Um, so how can people get a hold of you? How can people find the book? Um, have mm -hmm. you got a blog? You know, How do people find out mm -hmm. more about Karosh Dini? So uh, the... Uh, books are at uh, masteryinworkflow.com is one uh, site. The other one is usingomnifocus.com. Um, I also have my own blog, um, which is uh, kuroshdini.com, and that's K-O-U-R-O-S-H-D-I-N-I.com. And, uh, yeah, those are it. Okay, I'll make sure those links are in the show notes, folk. Um, Again, Kurosh, thank you for your time, and uh, I'm looking forward to whatever you do next so that you can <laughs> come back and we can have another great chat. I had a wonderful time, Don. Thank you so much for having me on. So, I mean, I'd say it went on uh, a little bit longer than some of our previous interviews have, but uh, I, as hopefully you could tell, I really enjoyed that chat with Kurosh. Absolutely, mate. It sounds like uh, you have to get off the, uh, the couch a little bit. He gave you a little bit of a... Uh... A, um, a psychological uh, fl throw around a little bit with some questions there for you. Yeah, that was really weird. He, he just before the call, you know, we had a little chat, but also in the introduction and and the bit of the, the kind of peripheral pieces around the book, he explains that his day job is as a, as a psychologist. And it definitely came through. Yeah, he he was almost interviewing me at one mm -hmm. point. Um, but no, it was great, and hopefully, you know, I've I've picked out my personal takeaways from the book during that interview we talked about the things that i personally got from it but as i said in the interview um and i said to karosh i'm i feel that that a lot of people are going to get have their own personal things that they get from this book it'll help them understand these other workflow so if you're out there and you're you know you maybe looked at gtd and it's not quite working for you or you you've struggling to keep going with some of the things a lot of the reasons for that um is to do with the fact that you don't fully understand it or it's not quite ingrained in your your own internal language and this is again a topic just the generic nature of the topic that, that Karush has in the book um and this is the 
at that point, this book is great. You know, Karush himself says in the interview, uh, you know, as you heard there, Pete, he calls it a kind of a textbook mm. um, where it's got the answers, as many of the answers as he can give you, and if it hasn't got an answer for something, a particular question, it's got a cross-reference to where you might find it. Because he does, he makes masses of cross-references in there. I mean, I didn't even get to mention some of them in the interview, but you know, he talks about Neil Fiore's book about the now habit. He talks about David Allen's Getting Things Done, Josh Waitzkin's The Art of Learning. All these books that we've talked about right from the very beginning of this show and even people that we've interviewed, they're all referenced in his book. So it's almost like a book that was written for the printer community. Uh, to kind of go along <laughs> with it. the things that we talk. It isn't a light book, okay? I, I openly said that in the interview, as you heard me say. You know, it's not a light book. It, it's, it's a, there's a lot, it's dense, there's a lot of stuff in there, but you can dip in, get stuff. And also, there's a load of supporting, cool supporting stuff because it's a digital download. Um, and you can, you know, there's flashcards and reviews, quick review checklists and things like that that come as extras. Um, so all in all, I mean, I say I really enjoyed it. It's, it's not a light read. <laughs> um, and it, but it is something that, as I said, my personal copy is covered in those little yellow markers and highlights, um, for the things that stood out to me. And I think a lot of people are going to get a lot of value from this. And hopefully they got a lot of value from that little chat that I had with Karosh as well. Very, very cool. Well, speaking of a lot of value, uh, our next episode is our 100th birthday kind of thing. Well, 100th episode, not really a birthday, I guess, but it's our 100th episode, and we're doing something very, very cool. We're doing it live. Indeed, indeed. The, the fear is upon me. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, Mate, I mean, we, do a lot of, we do a lot of live Q&As for our Platinum group, and we get such a great response. We've always had a great response from the live Q&A format. And so Pete and I decided to open up a, a live Q&A. Uh, and it is live Q&A. It's not just being Pete live. It's like a live Q&A. We want, we want you guys to join us on a live call and submit your questions, which we will answer there and then to the best of our abilities and as honestly as possible. Um, so... Yeah, we're we're shuffling the date a little bit just to make sure that we can keep on schedule. Um, it will be a now then because it's a Melbourne day as well. What's the date, Pete? Mm. So it's going to be Friday the twenty eighth uh, Melbourne time, which makes it Thursday the twenty seventh uh, in the US. Um, and obviously Europe's obviously somewhere around that as well. Uh, well. We'll have obviously all the details and things on the blog, but it's going to be um, 7.30 a.m. Melbourne time, which will be 5.30 p.m. on the Thursday um, in the east coast of the U.S. Yep. Um, get your calculators out to work out your time zone. But we'll have all the details uh, on the blog. Um, so make sure you check out preneurmarketing.com, preneurmedia.tv. Uh, hopefully you're already part of our community newsletter, uh, which you, sh- you can subscribe to at preneurmarketing.com and we'll email you out the details. Um, you know, the last um, webinar we, we did for our community, we had 1,400 people register. So I'm guessing with something like this, we're going to have a few thousand people at least um, online during the live call, which is going to be super fun. Uh, we may have to up the go-to webinar account to, to host everybody, um, but it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a, a whole lot of fun. Excellent. I mean, really, folks, we were encouraging you to join in, join in, be part of the live stuff. This is the feedback that we get all the time with our Q&As with our Platinum group, that being there live, having that interaction, the ability to to ask a question that's on your mind right there and then and get it answered. People get so much value from that, and we want to extend that out to the community as a thank you for being with us for a hundred episodes. I, I just, I, I'm a little bit shocked actually. I, I've mentioned this to a couple of people recently that it's going to be our hundredth episode. Uh, it's including Karosh. And he said, wow, really? You guys have been going that long? He said, yeah, we've, we've done, uh, we've had a good run and we're, we're really appreciative of the audience sticking with us. One last thing mentioning Karosh and I will remind everybody whenever we have an author on, we ask our authors to give us copies of their book. And Karosh has very kindly given us 
four copies of his book with the workflow beyond productivity um so if you visit preneurmarketing.com forward slash win the link will be in the show notes preneurmarketing.com forward slash win you can enter to win a copy of Karosha's book and you can always go cool. there if you're listening to this show later on after the fact because we cycle through these when we get a new author we ask for some more prizes so always be visiting preneurmarketing.com forward slash win because there's going to be something there that you can win absolutely Cool. Awesome, guys. Well, uh, look, we won't drag this one on too much longer. We'll start getting prepared for our live show uh, in a couple of weeks, so make sure you join us there. And then, obviously, um, I think we've mentioned before is post our 100th show, we're going to go back to weekly again um, just for that first six months of this year with um, babies and other bits and pieces going on in everybody's life. We decided to do it bi-weekly every, every two weeks. But um, moving forward again, after the 100th show, we're going to be back to uh, a weekly edition of Preneurcast. So uh, your wishes have been granted for everyone who's been emailing and tweeting and stuff like that. So super excited about that. Indeed, indeed. Um, so we'll wrap it up there. Thanks, everyone, for listening as always. And as always, please do visit us on preneurmedia.tv. Leave us a comment. Uh, get the transcripts. Download the, the, the podcast for offline listening um, or visit us on iTunes and leave us a comment there um, thanks for listening thanks for being with us for 99 episodes and please join us for the 100th episode live in a couple of weeks see you all soon see you again <laughs>